What's really good? It's your boy, Hatter in the house with the one and only Hugh that coach, Hugh Jackson in the building. What's going on, my guy? What's up, Hatter? How you doing, man? It's always a pleasure and honor to get on with you. Hey, man, listen, you know, Coach Hugh, you, you on my real people list on my phone. I mean, I can show you my phone. I got about, you know, 500 unread messages. You know, I only talk to people, you know what I'm saying? If they hate you, they're going to tell you they hate you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't talk with the people that play behind the bush now. So, no, you know, you, you know how it is. And I know you was in the Indy. And how, how was the combine and stuff? No, it was great. I mean, I'm sure everybody's seen. There was tremendous skill and speed. And, um, you know, there were some other guys you wish would have worked out. But at the same time, boy, the guys that did, they really showed out. How about that guy worthy breaking the record, breaking the 40 yard dash record? And I know everybody said it doesn't matter. But it does matter because I promise you, when he comes in the league, all those DBs that's got to cover him, they're going to back up because the guy can run. So, definitely. But it was a lot of guys that ran fast, that's for sure. Now, speaking of worthy, I mean, he's about 165, right? I no, mean, he's 165. Do think, now, do you think that's going to really matter? I mean, I, it's only going to matter if they're going to catch the damn guy, right? It's right. Only How big is Tyreek Hill? How much does Tyreek Hill yeah. weigh? That's true. That's true. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, that is on. true. I mean, some of these guys who are built like that, they're tough. They, they're strong. You know, the guy had a really good career at Texas. Uh, right. I think he's going to gonna do some really good things in the league. And it's where you put him. It's the situation you put him in. Definitely. No, I mean, you know, like you were saying, you know, being built in the NFL will get you somewhere. And the special guest mm -hmm. for today, I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, this boy was built different. You know what I'm saying? He was, you know, running through everybody. You know, oh, so wow. so, you know, the special guest, you know, is here and going to bring him on and coach you. I'm going to tell you right now, you coached him in the past. So oh, wow. here we go. And today's special guest on the What's mm -hmm. Really Good podcast is Mr. Steven Davis. I was right. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> See, what's when you tell me about up, somebody that's my guy, that right there, big country, is my guy. There's no doubt. Yeah, man. Steven Davis in the house. Right what's going on? Yeah. Nothing much, man. Just got back from vacation, celebrated my 50th birthday with some mm -hmm. friends and family and had a good time. I ain't parted like that in probably 30 years. <laughs> so you had to let and it Steven out. Huh? Knows how to party, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. I, it, it, we uh, we had a good time, man. Me and my wife and some friends of mine. We had a real good time, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, Steven. I mean, you know, I had to bring you on. You know, obviously, you and Coach Hugh being together with the Redskins and stuff like that. He was a running back coach for you and stuff like that. I mean, what, what's going on nowadays, man? Like, what's up with you? I know your son is a linebacker. You know, at North Carolina, you know, Aggies and stuff. Well, actually, man, he uh he graduated a couple of years ago, and uh, okay, he's actually he's actually looking for a job now. So, okay. but uh, he he was he was pretty he did pretty good at North Carolina and T. He had a trial with Washington, and uh, okay. they didn't bring him back. They didn't bring him back. I guess being at a HBCU is it's kind of hard for them guys, man. But uh, I'm proud of him, man. He got his degree. He graduated. Uh, what you call that? Cumulati or whatever that is. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know. Cumulati, yeah. Kumulati, I mean, from North Carolina T and T, that's that's good. And like I said, he's just right. searching for a job, something he wanted to uh, make a career in. And like I said, I'm proud of him. Definitely, definitely. You know, nowadays they have a lot of outlets. You know, you can do coaching and and all that stuff. And and having a dad like you, you know, what I'm saying it's seventy, almost seventy total touchdowns. I mean, come on now. I mean, nowadays people coming in and, you know, of course, they're dressing all fancy and stuff. They might got, have like 100, 200 Instagram followers. But you look at the stats, they might just have three touchdowns, you know. So, yeah. I'm, you know, <laughs> another reason I got to bring you on on here is because, you know, people got to remember the past. Now, I mean, some people say, hey, man, past is past. Well, listen, past sometimes is the foundation, right? And um, yeah, exactly. You know, bringing bringing you on is bringing some memories, and I'm sure Coach Hughes, you know, got a lot of memories. But uh, getting drafted with the Redskins, man, and going in yeah. there, I mean, three, four, you know, years over 1,300 yards and stuff like that. How was it playing for the organization at that time? 
Yeah, when, I, I was drafted in 96. When I was drafted, uh, I fell to the fourth round. You know, you listen to all those draft experts. They, they say I should have went first round or whatever. But I look at it like this, man. Anytime you get an opportunity to play in on, in a league like the NFL, with the with guys that can that everybody's good is is a, a God given blessing, and then to have the opportunity to get drafted and go play behind Terry Allen and uh, Brian Brian Mitchell and learn from them guys for three four years, that was even better, you know. And uh, and then when you have a guy like Hugh Jackson come in, and I got two favorite coaches in the NFL, and that's Hugh Jackson and Bobby Jackson. Both of them named Jackson. You see that? You, you see that? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Hugh, man, he, he he taught me the little things about about football, about playing running back. He taught me the little things, the little things that get you through a game, get, get you through practice, and stuff that's outside of football. You know, and um, that's why now, man, I, everything of that that I've learned in football in the NFL, I use it today with my family, my kids my grandkids. So, and you know, you can't thank them guys enough, man, for um, instilling work ethic, uh, attitude, and just going out and doing some of the things that a lot of people can't do because if everybody can do it, they'll do it. And then to have, like I said, Coach Hugh, when he came in with Marty Schoenheimer, man, it, it, we started off bad. We started off rough. We started off rough. But, uh, I tell everybody to this day, if they would have kept that team together and that coach and coaching staff together, I think we would have did some good things. But you know, powers be, they made some dumb mistakes and did some dumb things, and you know, and you can't you can't change that. But looking back on it, if they would have did it the way it's supposed to have been done, I think it would have been a lot better. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think about that, Coach? You? No, I first of all, this was one of the greatest running backs I've ever coached. But more so than that, he taught me how to coach pros. That was my first year in the National Football League with Marty Schottenheimer, brought me along. And I got to coach one of the best runners ever in the Washington Redskins, what they were now. They're the commanders now. Uh, history. Yeah, you're always, he was, you're always be this, guy, this guy was a warrior. I mean, I can go back to days us playing New York when he didn't practice all week and seeing him, watching him drain, what is it, 30, 40 cc's from his knee and him laying in there and I'm going in there seeing if he's going to play. And he goes, what do you mean am I going to play? I'm playing. And all of a sudden he get up off that table and kickstart that engine and you go out there and he runs for over 100 yards. That's when you see toughness. You know, people don't understand the behind the scenes watching a guy whose knee was hurt. And he had really no business playing, but he wasn't going to let his teammates down. He wasn't going to let his coaches down. So he was out there. So you're talking about determination, grit, toughness. That's who Stephen Davis was. And he was the heartbeat of that football team. And he had the right head coach. Marty was about running the ball. Marty wanted to run the football. And so it it just exemplified the type of player he was. And no, Stephen wasn't no fourth round draft pick. He should have been a first round draft pick. He was one of the best backs in the league, bar none. And he proved that. Look what he did in Carolina after that. He led that team to a Super Bowl. So that's what it's all about. No, for sure. I mean, and Coach Hugh, what do you think some of the running backs nowadays are lacking? And like, for example, like, you know, like what are they lacking, you think, from past running backs like Stephen Davis? I don't know that they're lacking. I think the game's changed, right? I mean, yeah. they're throwing the football so much more. But it's really interesting. When you get to play off football, you see these teams running the ball. And when yeah, you can yeah. run the football in the National Football League, great things happen for you. My success, whether it was as a coordinator or a head coach in the league, was being able to run the football. But I learned all that stuff from this man because the toughness of the game is still where it is because there will be some guys that will tap out on Sunday, Monday, or Thursday, because they don't like it rough like that because everybody's throwing the yeah. football. Yeah, and it, and, it, and, run, and, and running the ball brings attitude, man. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the easy play to call in in, in, a, in a football game is is a running play. You can just turn them around and hand the ball off. But like I said, that, that brings attitude and grit, and the offensive lineman loves it. Loves mm -hmm. it. Thing is, like you know, like. I can name one running back nowadays that might have an old school touch to him, like Derrick Henry, you know, feed, feed, feed. But everyone else mm -hmm. is just putting, you know, it's a, you know, 
mediocre numbers up, you know? So it's like, you know, they kind of shine away from that running game. What are you going to say, Steve? Don't forget about Nick Chubb now. Oh, yeah, Nick Chubb was good. Yeah, don't and, forget about and, him, man. Nick, no, yeah. Nick Chubb is good. I, I'm just, yeah. you know, that yeah. injury he got, man, was just yeah. crazy, man. And yeah, like, it was crazy. Uh, and I and I guarantee the, the type of guy he is, I guarantee he'll come back 100% from that, bro. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. The type it's of guy. A, I heard he's already yeah, squatting a, and stuff like that, you know? No, he is. It's a specialist game, though. And that's what makes, you know, and everybody loves it because here comes the scat back in. You throw the ball to him. You do all that. But to win games, to really win games, when you can turn around and hand the ball to a guy and he is the bread and butter of your football team, those teams are the teams that are most successful, in my opinion because you see it. And I think the really good teams, the Pittsburghs and some of those other teams, they've gotten away from that. And once Pittsburgh went back to that this past year, well, Mike Tomlin's record got better. You know, it's just, you can just see it. And I think people are going to start, I mean, football, everything is, is, is always adapting. Right. And I think it's going to come back to where it was at some point in time. You got to be able to run the football. Yeah, because they 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 devaluing the running back way too much right now. I get I get real mad when I see that. But the thing you got, I'm I'm gonna give you an example, man. When I when I left Washington and went to Carolina, Carolina probably had the best young defense in the league at that time. But he just didn't have a running game, and they but they had to show a Foster. But he he was he was hurt, and they didn't they weren't thinking he was gonna be the running back he was before that, and. Uh, John Fox, he just wanted to run the ball. He just wanted to run. And we had a quarterback in Jake Dahon at the beginning of the season. He didn't even start. He came in at, at halftime after the uh, – when we were playing uh, Jacksonville, made a couple of throws, and we ran the ball and won that game in the last second. And by us running the ball, that took care of him. Because in the NFC Championship game that year, we didn't throw the ball but nine times. But we ran it 40 times. And that's how you win games in the playoffs. He know that. He he know that. He just said he know that. But I, they just devalue the running back a lot to me to, right now. And I call it flag football right now. The way them guys <laughs> run, run around throwing the ball. And, it, you know, it's entertaining. It's, it's very entertaining. And, you know, everybody's going to love it because they're scoring points. But, right, like I say, right. if you can't run the ball, you ain't going to win no championships nowhere. Definitely. I mean, you know, the game is just not like how it used to be. And uh, Stephen Davis, man, listen, you know, obviously you're on the What's Really Good podcast, you know, and, you know, in this podcast, we got to keep it real. And we talk about all type of things, man. We got it. Hey, Coach, uh-huh. you probably already know what's about to happen. <laughs> listen, I, I'm going to keep it what, real with you 100%. What happened in the past happened, but um, yeah, this guy single handedly gave me this jersey. He sent it to me. All right, I know. Oh, I okay. <laughs> he sent me this jersey. All right. Yeah. He's my guy. He's my guy. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you Can right we, now. Yeah. If he was on this show, I would tell him right now. If you go one on one with him again, I don't think that would be the outcome. You know. But Stephen Davis, what happened with that whole Michael Westbrook and uh, you know I'm, punching I'm, you out of practice? What happened, bro? I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this, man. I'm gonna tell you like this. If if it wasn't get like that today, I got bail money. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? If I got bail money. Some bad gonna happen. If he's gonna happen to him, or he's gonna happen to me. I'm not fighting nobody. I'm too old. Like my bones hurt, my knees hurt, my back hurt. I'm not fighting nobody. But to ask you a question, it wasn't. It was. It was. I actually had just had knee surgery. I was over on the side rehabbing and uh, doing some running with the trainer and stuff. And uh, I guess it was Brian Mitchell, Terry Allen, Terry Allen. Les, Les Shepard, um, the head coach, uh, not the head coach, one of the receiver coach, uh, Terry Robisky. They all were standing around talking about who had the best hands on the team. And uh, I walked up, and when I walked up, they asked me, who I think had the best hands on the team. And I said, James Thrash. And Westbrook said, y'all just jealous of me. Y'all jealous of my cars and all that shit. And I said, man, that's some punk shit. And I walked off. And as I'm walking off, he punched me in my eye. Stole on me. Yep. Yeah, and that's what, that's what everybody caught. 
but uh they had to really talk to me because i was gonna do something real stupid i was gonna do something real stupid i went home that day and uh i had some glasses on my wife said why you got the my glass glasses on and i say uh no, don't worry about it and she, as, as i'm talking to her the news come on and it shows him punching. She said, "What? Oh, what the? Fuck? You know, I'm excuse, I'm sorry, but she was yelling and all that. And uh, we uh, before I left the facility, though, I I went I went out to the car to get my gun. I went out to the car because I kept my gun in my car at the facility. I don't know why I did that, but I just I always did. But uh, I walked out to my car as I'm walking back in. You had Dale Green and Terry Robisky stop me." And gave me probably one of the best talks in my life that I could have ever had because I was finna do something real dumb. But he was gone by then. He was gone. And uh it was it's funny because for, they didn't let me practice for a whole week and a half. And I actually followed him for two weeks. Hmm. I followed, I really wanted to do something to him. But by them talking to me and telling me and letting me know. Man, it's not worth it and everything. I, I just had I just had, had my son and everything. And uh it was a blessing because if you look at it, this was this happened in 1997. If you look at it, the way my career went and his career went, totally different. It was a blessing in disguise by me taking the high road because I never had no hatred with, with him. I believe he gave me a, a genuine apology that he was sorry. I believe that, and I forgave him because if you're gonna have, if you're gonna, if you're gonna let somebody have that over your head for a long period of time and have hatred against that person, your blessings ain't gonna come, man. And my blessings came. All my blessings came. And like I say, if I see Michael Westbrook today, I dab him up. But you know, it is what it is. I'm not your. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not gonna be your friend. But when we played ball, we played ball. We was on that field together, and we did things together. Like in '99, he had one of the best seasons of his of his career. I had one of the best seasons of my career, and you couldn't tell that we ever had any kind of altercation unless somebody said something on the on that was commentating or something like that. But I, like I say, I don't have no animosity against him. I don't have no hatred against him. Nothing like that. It's just you know, he he made a mistake at a young age. That he shouldn't have made, but God take care of his God take care of his people. No, definitely. I mean, I mean, like I was, you know, before I began the conversation, I told you mm. if he was on this show, I would still tell him how it is, and I told him personally already that hey, man, I think. Oh, it, it, and let know, me tell you, you know, the, it was a, it was a cheap shot. That, you know, that, that's the hardest I ever been hit in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the hardest I ever been hit in my life. But like I said, like I tell anybody. Like I, I can be reading something, somebody say something, or I can be on social media and somebody say something about Michael Westbrook, and and I get out of line at, at one at sometimes, and I say, you come and do it. You know what I mean? That that shuts them up because the thing is, I'm not a violent person, but I can go there. Right. I don't have no reason to go there. Like I say, I'm 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 content with my life right now. I'm content with what I got going on. My kids, my grandkids, I got to set examples. And all that, so I'm not gonna be out here doing nothing stupid. They can put me in jail unless I'm provoked. And like I tell anybody, don't mess with my God, my money, or my family. That's it. And we we good. We will Definitely. be good. Definitely, and you know, like you were saying, God was good with you, man. You went with yeah. the Panthers, right? Yeah. And you single-handedly, single. Forget about the whole, you know, teams. Besides Steve Smith and you know Muhammad and all that, you single handedly took them to Super Bowl thirty eight. Okay, yeah, I had some help, I mean, man. You know, I, I ain't mean, gonna take all the credit, but yeah, no, yeah, come on, yeah. fourteen hundred yeah. yards. I mean, come yeah. on, Steve, you got to yeah. give credit when it's due. Now, you single handedly yeah. took them there. You asked any Panther, uh, you know, sad Panther fan, you know, the last time they had Joyce was. Super Bowl 38 during that day, you know, during that era. How was it switching from the Redskins going to the Panthers and taking them to the Super Bowl? And obviously, you know, Tom Brady being in front of you, and you know, we you know, we you know, we all know about Tom Brady, man. What can we say? Right. First of all, I was hurt when I got released because he'll tell you this. 
I was on vacation for my birthday. My birthday starts on the first league year, first day of the league. So when I got released by the Panthers, by the uh, by Washington, I was hurt. I was I was so hurt, man. And the crazy, I'm a, I ain't never told nobody this story. The crazy thing was when I got released, I talked to Hugh and I talked to Dan Schneider. And uh, we was in Jamaica. And uh, I said, I'm going to smoke me some weed today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh I never I never I never smoked no weed never and um I, I did that day and uh I, I think I was seeing shit. I was seeing big iguanas <laughs> walking around walking around but anyway but when um uh, when I when I left Washington like I said it hurt man that that because I knew I knew the, the talent that was on that team and the guys in that locker room that if we had the right situation we can we can we can do something. And uh, when I went to Carolina, they op- they had open arms for me, and uh, you know that was that was a special year for me, man. Cause that same year I lost my grandmother that was that was close to me, and being close to home, being cause we we practiced right in my hometown for training camp, so that was good. A lot of people that get did get to see me play in college or, or NFL got to see me play a whole lot, and ticket sales went up. Because of that, you know what I mean. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna brag about it, but they did. And uh, you know, every game was a was a was a fight on that when we when we had that Super Bowl run. Every game was a fight. I, um, the second game of the season, we had to play the defending Super Bowl champs in Tampa Bay, and uh, we won nine to, nine to three or something like that, nine to six, nine to six, nine to seven, nine to ten, something like that. But it was a hard fall game and. And every game was like that. And even against Washington, uh, you know, I hated playing against the first player of the game. I fumbled when I carried the ball. First player of the game, I fumbled. And uh, I, I was I was nervous more than, more than anything because I don't care what nobody say. Anytime they play a team that they used to play on, they're going to be nervous as hell. I don't care who they is. And I was nervous because I was playing, with guy, playing against guys that I have went to battle with. And it didn't seem right to me at first, but once I got in the groove of the game, we, I, I, I turned out pretty good. But that whole season, like I say, was every game was a fight. We we didn't quit. Uh, John Fox instilled us in that during the whole season, and um, it just so happened we just came up short against against the goat. And how many Super Bowls he went to? Ten. Yep, ten and one seven. Yep, yeah, shit. That's some, something wrong with that, right, Steve? Something wrong with that, right? With Tom Brady, <laughs> nah, you know, nah. what's you wrong know, with it? I don't know, what's wrong man. With it? I, sometimes I, I, I mean, think about it, man. Sometimes what, I think well, about it. When when Spygate came out, when, when Spygate came out, we uh, you know, you listen to a lot of the football, the uh, defensive guys, and they were saying that uh. They had three new defenses in that nobody ever seen before, but they had a perfect play called against that against them defenses. So I don't know if they they cheated or whatever, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I mean, look, <laughs> but if you know but, what's going on. I'm yeah, not saying Tom Brady is a cheater, man. We know the whole deflated ball situation yeah. and all that crap. Okay, and, and, he went to the Buccaneers. Oh yeah. wow, they're playing their own stadium in the Super Bowl. He goes in the yeah. damn Bucks and wins the damn Super Bowl with the Bucks, man. Like, I mean, I'm not saying they're cheating, but something's up. Something. Yeah, and, fishy, and, then, man. and then we 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 made the we made a mistake late in the game there where we kicked the ball out of bounds mm. and gave him a short field. You can't give Brady no short field nowhere. And like I said, he's a goat, man. And to be able to see it up close and in person, I was at awe. And and. My running back coach at the time, Jim Skipper, he came up to me and uh, he said, we still can win this game. And I really felt that when he said it. But I, I some for some reason, I I just couldn't, I, I couldn't adapt it, the whole idea that we was going to win. I'm talking about when they driving down the field with the short field. We still can win this game. But I, I just, because the game going overtime, we beat them. We beat them easy. Now, man, like Panthers are, uh, you know, I'm not gonna compare them to uh, to the Redskins, man. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna try be, very hard. He coach you be, knows. I'm gonna try. Be, I'm not even gonna talk about the Redskins in this podcast. Be, be honest, it's man. Gonna be long, be it's gonna be a long episode. Be honest, you know, man. The Panthers are sorry right now, and the Redskins are sorry right now. 
I mean, they're both sorry, but I don't yeah. know which team is the sorriest is what I'm trying to figure did out. They play, did they play each other the past year? Who won? <laughs> I don't. I don't think no one's gonna watch that game now. I, I think they're not trying. I think they're not trying but, to connect the dots with them. You know what I'm saying? But but I, but the, the thing the thing with the thing and he will tell you this with any NFL team you got to have consistency, man. Right. That's right. why that's if you look at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh been good for a long time. They only had three head coaches in the last sixty years. That's consistency. You got to be able to put what. You got to be able to put guys in the front office that can get talent on the field and be able to go out there and perform. And one of the things that I, I see what the problem is with with uh, Carolina is they didn't have no offensive line to protect this kid. He can throw the ball now. He can play. He can play. I actually seen him play against Alabama, against Auburn uh, when his senior year when he before he came out. He can play, man. They just got to put a line in front of him. You can't if you don't have no line in front of a quarterback, you gotta get killed. I mean, that's what they were saying. They're saying, you know, yeah. they're coming in with a good old line, and it was actually the worst old line in the whole league. And yeah. you know, they were averaging four yards per, you know, per pass, and that's the worst since 2011 Jacks. Yeah. So it's just like you know, you know, all we was trying to do was dimp dumping and and trying to make something happen. And you know, Coach, you this question is for you too. What do you think some of the things they can do? The Panthers itself, you know, I know they hired the you know Canales as the new head coach. Something for these uh, Carolina Panther fans out there, you know, hiding in the cave or whatever. What what are some <laughs> things that could be positive for the Panthers you know, I, 2024? Look, you, what could possible you, options? Well, the positive is you got a new head coach. You just mentioned that. I think you got to build a football team. And Steven said it. I mean, it's still the game is still won with big people in the trenches. And you have a quarterback. You got to protect him. You got to put him in position to have success. Uh, he was the first overall pick. Uh, we got to get the media up off his back. And the only way you can do that is put the right people around him. And that comes from coaching. That comes from players. That comes from a style of play. You got to go let this kid be who he is because he is a tremendous player. I mean, he didn't become the first pick of the draft just because. I think he's a good player. But no one knows that right now because there's not an offensive line that can stand there and protect for the kid and you got to have big time receivers and you got you just got to do everything you can to make him successful all right yeah. i mean i'm trying to i'm gonna be honest with you uh you know i went i went on the panthers website and i <laughs> clicked on <laughs> i clicked on coaching staff i don't know who the heck i do not know none of these names man I, I, except, I, I, except capers and you know, I, because I was a Redskins, because I'm a Redskins fan, I I had no comment because I I have no position to see anything. I, I, All I, I did I was delete my history on my phone, and I was like, man, listen, I ain't gonna say nothing. The one the, the one good thing that I I like what they did though with Carolina is they have they hired Dan Morgan, mm. and and Dan Morgan is one of those guys that was on the O three team. He was a linebacker, and he's he's got a track record of being with Seattle and being successful up there but he know i i feel that he knows the players that he need to go out there and win in this today's nfl i really do and i think he'll get it done it might not be this year it might not be next year but i think within three years they should be contending in three years i mean they just signed burns long contract you know i mean mm -hmm. the defense is trying to uh i guess that, build that, up. that's one thing the defense always have been good that right. have been good, but it's just that offense, man. It's something about the offense. I don't know what it is. Um, I think they made a dumb decision by getting rid of Chris Chris McCaffrey. I think that was dumb. I think it was dumb by getting rid of uh, DJ Moore. But that's what they do. They make they make decisions that don't make sense. And DJ Moore had to score five touchdowns against the Redskins last year. On Monday yeah. night, I'm sure you, you saw that, and I'm just I'm over there just yeah. you know, I was just twinkling yeah. my toes, and you know about to I was about to turn my TV off, but hey, it is what it is, you know. Yeah, I actually picked Chicago to win that game, so I want a little money. Oh, me too. Game. I was like, I was like, okay, D, I, before the game started, I'm like, <laughs> matter of fact, yeah. this is a true story. Before the game started, I traded a player to one of the guys in my league. 
and for DJ Moore. He's like, why you want him so bad? I said, because, you know, he's going to score about five touchdowns against us tonight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, you're right. So, and yeah. that's what happened. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, hopefully, you know, you know, the Panthers can uh, come out and, you know, do good. You know, I, I hope for the best for them, you know. Mm. you know, As a Redskins fan, you know, I can't say that I hope the bad for them, you know. But I think, uh, I think the Redskins can, can, can. I think they got a guy in there that's gonna be consistent. I really do. With uh, but you got like I say, you gotta be consistent with this thing, man. You can't you can't make knee jerking uh, decisions, and that's what that's what a lot of times that's what happened to these owners, man. No, Steve, let me, guy. And see, let me ask you something, and Coach, you you might agree on this. You know, Cam out there, Cam Newton, he's out there, man. He's beating up little kids and stuff like that. You know, his hat ain't flying off while he's doing the damn. No, 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 hold on. I ain't, I ain't gonna let you do my guy like that. He, no, I mean, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm not gonna saying, let you do my guy listen, like that. Listen, listen, listen. I'm not saying. They, no, they, they, they didn't have no plan. To, on, I know. On I'm, I'm saying. That, I know they, they went to no him, plan. but I'm saying that he's still beating up the kids. Meaning, like he's too good. You know, what I'm saying he needs to be beating up people in the NFL. I mean, I'm happy what he did with those kids now. I mean, yeah. I was happy. I'm on his yeah. side. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just telling you in generic that he's beating up some kids, and I can't believe what the kids were thinking going up against a six five, you know, type of dude. You know, you know, with his hair on top, got another foot on him, right? Yeah. What do you think, yeah. man? You, you think you think they should just bring him back, man? Like, kind of teach Bryce or something? You know, you know, he, he should get another opportunity. I would say. You know, pride is a motherfucker. It's too much pride in it, and I don't think, as an owner, with uh, who's the Carolina Panthers owner? What's his name? New owner, now, right? Tepper, 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 Tepper. But I, I just, I, I just went don't, on the website. I had no yeah. clue what none of the coaches were, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But Tepper, Tepper, he, I think he, his, his pride and, and Cam's pride would not let that happen, bro, hmm. because. You know, it was a lot of things that has been said about how he got released and everything. He came back because he wanted to play football, but you know, what I mean, now I don't think I don't think it's something that he would uh, he would he would do. I think he'll play for another team, but I don't think he'll play with Carolina. No, exactly. Carolina. Even even yeah. if it's not Carolina, I think he should. You know, I think he's still able to play. Honestly, I think he still mm -hmm. has it in him. And I think he can still go out there and, you know, be at least top 15, if anything. I mean, you know, that's just my opinion. The guy is a specimen, man. Oh, oh my God. God. He's a big man. <laughs> he, 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 he's bigger than people think. Yeah, he, yeah. And I, and that's I what I'm saying, he, Coach. I don't know what the kids were thinking, man, that day. Man, I don't know man, what the hell this, was thinking. This man, had a whole fight. He, this man had a whole fight and his hat didn't fall off. Telling you. <laughs> he had two guys by the yeah. head, and one he got one dude by his foot. Man, I'm like, yeah. dude. But I mean, Cam, I, if he gets another chance to play, which I highly doubt it, it won't be Carolina. It might be Atlanta. He'd Someone be like fired. that. He'd be fired over there. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, and he and he'll bring some ticket sales in too because he's from Atlanta. So. Right. No, he definitely gonna bring ticket sales in general. I mean, that's why yeah. I'm like, that's why me, and Coach, you always he's, talk he's about. He's in he, He's entertaining. He's entertaining. He's very. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I'm saying. They need to bring in some of these entertaining people, and and, and you know, kind of bring them in, and and you know, you know, you, you but you, Stephen, you do make a good point about pride. You know, you know, you know, yeah. Cam is one of those guys. You know, he 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 cares about that more, and you know. As you yeah. should, you know, pride is a good thing to have. You know, some people look yeah. at it and say hey, it's whatever, but yeah. it's true for sure. But um, you know, for the Panthers fan out there, man, what do you what do you think the record possibly could be this year, man? Like something for them, man. Like, what do you think? Do you think? Oh, how about this? Let me say it nicely. Do you think it's going to be better than the Redskins' record? <laughs> <laughs> or do you think it might just be a tie? Hey, hey, man. <laughs> Hey, uh, I don't know. I have no clue. I really don't. I you hope have a better record than they had this past year. Yeah, exactly. I think that. And I hope both of them be successful because you don't, you never know 
what can happen. They might go in in this year and and put in Washington too. Uh, they might go in this year and turn everything around from what they did last year. I done seen it happen too many times. Look at Detroit up there, man. Detroit struggled for a couple of years, but now Detroit has a good team. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, listen, Detroit was always legit in my eyes. I yeah. mean, Steven, I'm sure you remember about 15, you know, 13, 14 years ago when they, you know, lost 19 games in a row and they played us. And before the game started, I'm in elementary school. I was like, oh, yeah, they're going to beat us. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I, you know, as a as a Redskins fan, I never underestimate any teams. Now, you no. know, a second gen fan, a second gen yeah. fan, I don't underestimate any yeah. team. Dan no. Quinn's gonna get it right at the Redskins. He will. Yeah. And uh, I mean, he, uh, I hope he's a good hopefully. coach. He understands the division. Uh, I think they're gonna give him the tools that he needs. He knows he has to go find a quarterback. Um, right. They brought in right. Cliff Kingsbury. They're gonna have a different style of offense. They do have uh, some runners, receivers there, so it's gonna be interesting. Now, I like, I like that, I like that pick in the offense coordinator. With we'll way, mm-hmm. like with the foot, the way football going now, he's a he's a good play caller. He ain't better than you though. He ain't better than you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, coach, you. But the thing is, see, my podcast two weeks ago with um, three weeks ago with Fred Smooth. You know, Fred. You know. Country guy, you know, he's smooth talking, you know what I'm saying? And, and Fred Coach is crazy, Greg, man. Fred he's crazy. crazy. He's crazy. He's so, crazy. And, and Coach Greg, you know, and me and him, we both decided to bring him on because, you know, the thing is, me and him were about to get, you know, he knew that we we're going to get into it. And that's what happened in that show. Yeah. Me and Fred got into it because he's trying to be a believer and I'm trying to be realistic. He's telling me <laughs> that, man, there's a new guy driving the truck. I'm like, well, there's he's been. right. He's right. Right. He's right. But, but Steven, there's been so many guys driving the truck in the past and they've been crashing the damn truck. So what do you think and why do you think at this time the driver is the right driver? Right? Let me, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. And you you can answer this question as well. You want the expectations to be high. So when you go out there on that field, you don't want them guys to be lackadaisical about nothing. Right. And especially with a new coaching staff coming in. You gotta have to start quick, and one of the things when Coach when, when Marty came in, we was mad them first five games because we had them worked that we we worked we worked hard. I'm talking about 15 <laughs> days straight, 15 Pad. days straight or tour pads. We worked hard. We was tired, but we but once we got our feet up on us, nobody didn't want to play us. You, you feel what I'm saying? And the way they got this set up now in the NFL. Them guys, they just need to be focused and understand that mistakes is not allowed in this locker room. No mistakes. Right. And hold no, each other accountable. Hold each other no, accountable, man. No, it's good to have good, you know, high expectations. I do have it. But I'm, at the same time, I'm trying to keep the, the boundaries low. You know, I'm not trying to say you know, anything you extra. You can't do that. I ain't trying to say anything yeah. less. You can't do that. Some, I mean, look, Hatter, they're gonna be Hatter, Hatter, scream for your team. They're gonna be all right. They're gonna yeah, be better. Gonna be, with but but Steven, yeah. look, Steven, see and, look. and we get you that are, you, you know, you got to be a little antagonist about right. about the Redskins. But at the same time, they have a new coach. He comes from Dallas. They won a lot of games. He was successful at Atlanta. He was successful right. in Seattle. He, uh, he put a real good staff together. They're gonna get talent. You know, they got a new talent see, evaluator, look, new GM. Now, you, look, the coach, you, but you're saying, you know, you're how you're saying bring new talent, right? Right. I, I saw the talent they brought in today, Mr. Zach Ertz. Right. He should be he should be cashing his 401k right now. And, and the thing <laughs> is, that's Zach a Hurts, who that? The tight end, yeah, the tight end young man that was at, uh, I think it was at the Cardinals most recently, right? Or was he at Philly most, most recently? Re- uh, he was oh, okay, just, okay. I know you're talking. About. I know you're talking. About. I know. Yeah. See, so what I'm saying is the new people, the new truck drivers in the building, and they're doing the same Redskins thing, hiring washed up players, and then trying to tell the people that hey, this is a new team. The really good teams in the National Football League, there's a lot of consistency in their programs. Right. Right. The bad organizations are the ones who just go through coaches and players very quickly. And you can just see it. That's what it's been. Baltimore has been consistently good. You mentioned Pittsburgh. 
if you even look at Cincinnati, if the quarterback doesn't get hurt, they will have been consistently good, yeah. Yeah. you know? And you look at the other teams across the National Football League, those teams where the coaches have been there, the staffs have been there, they know the players they're looking for. Why does Baltimore's team always look the same? Why does Pittsburgh teams always look? Because they have a profile for players. That's what they go draft to. That's what their team does. And you look at they have success. That's what this thing's all about. It, And I, I get surprised that people can't figure it out, right? Yeah. Whether it's Washington, yeah. Carolina, whoever, but that's the process in order to have really good teams. Yeah, you might be a player away every now and then. You might need another piece, whatever all that is. But those organizations know how to find it and they go get it. So that, that to me, that's the biggest thing that's going on in the league. And once people understand that, but Stephen knows this and the Hatter, you knows this a lot. For the owners, a lot of this, this is like their toy, right? Yeah. This is their toy. And they spend this money, they spend that money because so much money comes in. So the, the yeah. team, the owners have done a really good job of keeping their coaches, uh, drafting players, drafting to the profile, supporting their coaches, supporting their GMs. Those are the teams that win consistently the most. I mean, look, Coach, right. you, I, I, you, you said it perfectly and on point. Um, and obviously, we have in the high, the most highest cap space. Hopefully, the truck driver gets the right players in. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. The first one was kind of. Hey man, iffy. you sure you you sure you're watching? You sure you're a Commanders fan, man? Listen, I mean, listen. I, I'm a I'm a Commanders fan, Steve. <laughs> but the thing is, I, I'm a, I'm a real fan. Where where listen. I love them, but the thing is, it's just so many years, man, of of, of putting. You're the tired of them losing. Turn, you want right? to you want to see them turn the corner. Win. Remember, you were saying, and and coach you, everyone. Well, the ones who don't know about football, right? Understand? People are saying, okay, we have the second overall pick. Go ahead and pick a quarterback, which means forget about Sam Howell. That's a wrong mindset. The last fifteen years. We've been flip flopping quarterbacks around during the season, like uh, it's a, it's a game, right? Okay, mm -hmm. it's your turn to go in there and prove yourself. Okay, you suck. You come back out. Let me put you in now. They've been doing that for the last fifteen years, right? They need to trust one guy. Sam Howell got sacked more than Jason Campbell did, and still put up numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what does that mean? The guy can play. But now, just because you have a second overall pick, the ones who are Redskins fans, oh, yeah, man, we got to get a, a quarterback, man. We got to get a quarterback. Sam sucks. That's not how I'm thinking. I'm thinking is to be different from the Redskins that have been the past 15 years by flip-flopping around too much. Is Sam Harrell is good as what's in the draft this year. This is a very unbelievable draft for quarterbacks the top four or five quarterbacks all can play, you know? And so you got to, you got to compare those guys with him. If you think some guy's going to be a generational talent for the next 10, 12, 15 years, you have to make that move, but you got to be right. I agree with you on that. You can't, you can't mortgage, you know, the future for something like that. But, but you look at Chicago, everybody's talking about, they're going to take a quarterback. How do you, Justin, Justin is Justin Fields is just as good as anybody in the league. The whoever guy is kid, whoever, whoever whoever get that kid, they're gonna be that they're gonna be ten times better than they was last year. Whoever get that kid. He's, right. He's tremendous. And so they got a chance yeah. to really change their the trajectory of their football team. They got two picks in the first round, and they can keep this quarterback. And you're talking about getting rid of him. That makes no sense yeah. to me because I think that, he's very no talented. Sense. Yeah. yeah so I mean, what I'm saying yeah. is so what I'm saying is for the Redskins, they just gotta compare is is how as good as Williams, you know, the kid from LSU, the kid from Washington, the kid from North Carolina. I mean, all of those kids, you know, where does he fit in there? And then if he does, great, I'm with you all the way. But if he doesn't, you got to take the most talented player. But it's yeah. like, you know, Coach, you, we got top five picks in the first three rounds, right? Mm -hmm. um, top five picks. Uh, you know, you, we need an O-line. You get two, two, two oh, three yeah. good O-linemen. And you, you can't give up talent like marvin harrison jr you just can't mm -hmm. no right, right. And, right and he and i if i was there i would i would pick him second overall because he's a only wide receiver in the last 20 years who could possibly be the first or second pick overall in the draft what does that mean right right and 
I was just saying that I'm I'm trying to be bold. I'm trying to believe in Sam Howell, get him the protection he needs, so he can put up even better numbers this year, even being the most sacked last year, right? Just trust him, not draft a quarterback. I mean, God bless us all, Dwayne Haskins and 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 you know, you know, we saw all that stuff coming. Okay, we're drafting this guy. Okay, we have high hopes. RG3 and stuff. Be honest with you, the last 15, 20 years, I, I think Kirk Cousins was the best quarterback we had, right? Mm-hmm. Honestly, who was a stable quarterback, right? And we right. messed up on that as well, right? So I just think we we need to trust our players. We need to trust our players and, and, and put the pieces that we actually need. I mean, Steven, I mean, you know the Hogs too, even though it was a little before your time, but what did they do, right? I mean, yeah. O line yeah. was it was a big thing. I mean, if you don't have mm-hmm. an O line, aka Panthers, aka Redskins, for the past what how many how many years, nothing's gonna happen. You keep you, right. you, you, you keep saying going back to the the offensive line, defensive line, but I want to ask you this question: in this draft, in your opinion, who who's who who's the quarterback that you think can be the most successful in the NFL? I think there's about. A couple of them. I think Jaden Daniels can because I've seen him. I'm cl- close and personal. Uh, I think Caleb Williams can too, and I think Michael Penix can. I really do. Those three guys. I think they can really play. Now yeah. that being said, Stephen, you have to give them the right resources, and what I mean by that, the offensive line, receivers, just like with any quarterback, you got to support them the right way. And I think that's where there's been more quarterbacks that have come into the National Football League and not been successful, not because they couldn't play but because they didn't have the right support around them, you know? Yeah. And so that's, what's going to, I mean, just like right now, everybody's saying the kid of Carolina can't play. We all know that's not true. Right. But that's yeah. the narrative that's out there because they compare him to CJ Stroud at Houston that had an unbelievable year, but who can come yeah. in and play like CJ Stroud did this past year. in that situation, I think the three guys I just mentioned have the potential to do that, but you got to support them. And definitely, it's yeah. like you know. I I, I really like the Penny kid, man. I really like him. I like mm-hmm. him. The Caleb kid. I mean, I like all everybody that you name. I like him as well. But one thing you, you got to do, you got to put the offensive line in front of them because they don't. Right. They don't be on their best the whole. The but not only, season. but not only offensive line, Steven. It's like you know, God bless his old Haskins. He could have been good if it's always the first coach. If the first coach sets the player or the rookie up for failure, the player is done. It's always the foundation. If the foundation of the player coming in is good, he's going to strive. But if they're, if the player's first mm-hmm. coach is not the coach that is, you know, is good for his game, it, it's, a, it's a wrap. I mean, it's mm-hmm. NFL, you know. It's not – it's just not playground football, and and I, that's what I'm thinking. It's like all these running quarterbacks, Coach, you was talking about, they're amazing. But if they go in the wrong system, it's going to be trouble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? I got you on that. And that's why I'm just thinking. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, as a, as a Redskins fan, for so long, we've been seeing so many quarterbacks coming in and just not being in the system correctly. I, 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 and I'm, I think we should just tr- trust Sam Howell. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to come I'm gonna come to some games this year, man, and, and watch them with you. I want to watch some football games with you and see what really type of fan you really are. Shoot, man! If you if you were being <laughs> and three of my uncles who's been watching the Redskins ever since they li- little kids since '79, man, shoot, <laughs> man, you you gonna be in for a good one. I'm gonna tell you that, Steve. I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. Well, Cliff Kingsbury, who's been his quarterbacks. We know he's coached a lot of good quarterbacks, but right. you know you're from Mahomes. You go to Kyler Murray, who he had in the National Football League. You watch that style of play, guys who can run and move around. That's what he needs, right? So um, the guys we just talked about, those are those guys. They can run around with the football, make plays with their legs, but also throw it. So you would think that's the type of quarterback he wants. I don't know that Sam Harrell's that, you know, but you would think that that's the style that you want to – if I'm them, I'm trying to get Justin Fields as fast as I could, you know. Uh, because he is a proven runner, right? And he can throw it. Also, a player that fits the system. The clips and he can play, throw it. And he can throw it with. He can throw it with anybody. And I think the guy's a potential star. I really believe that. Uh, no, with the right, yep. with the right people, with the right system, and guys. No, when you have the right coach for that. 
See, when you have a kid like him, you lead the league in rushing. Just go look at Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens, right? right. A running back runs for 100 yards. Quarterback runs for 60. Receivers run for 50. You almost run it for 200 yards a game. You lead the National Football League, which means you lead time of possession, which means if you get a good defense, look out, you're going to win a ton of games. Yeah. You know, so I think the first thing people got to do is decide how they have to win within their division. Because that's the fastest way to the playoffs. What do I need to do? to win in my division and look at it and say, okay, the one thing we know about that division, talking about the AFCEs, there's not a, a real other than Phil. I mean, the kid that's at Philly, right? He runs the football. That's why they won a ton of games. Yeah. Just go look at the history. Go look at the last few years of why Philadelphia is winning so many games. Now they lost a lot at the end, whatever that was, the issues they had, they had. But when that kid's playing well and he's running around and throwing, they're the best offense in that division. I don't care what nobody says about Dallas. They can say Dallas all they want. Yeah, they throw it all over yeah. the place and they look pretty, but they're not as physical as those other teams. Yeah, I'm, and I'm tired of Dallas shit. I'm tired of them. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing about them. No, I'm tired of Dallas too, man. I mean, yeah. listen, I don't know. They yeah. got something going on too where they yeah. always choke in the playoffs, man. So yeah. I don't know. They might have some black magic on their team too, man. They, they ain't gonna they ain't gonna win they ain't gonna win no playoff game until they do right by Jimmy Johnson man. Right. Yeah, and y'all calm as calm as hell. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't even realize that man, calm as hell. And, and, That's true. You know, it, it, we, we talk about we talk about how good teams are, but a lot of times these teams don't win because they done did something, they done did something to to somebody or someone. Mm -hmm. Like he said that if he was in Washington's shoes, he would go get Justin Fields, somebody mm -hmm. that's been in the league, that done performed and put up numbers. He's put up numbers and put some guys that are around him that can make plays. He'll be amazing, man. Mm -hmm. Especially in in Kingsbury's offense, he, you'll be amazed what that kid can do with that offense, man. Hopefully, um, you know, Stephen. I, I pray the the truck driver does the right thing this time. I, I'm on I'm on the boat with you. I want that. Basically, going to happen is you yeah. know I'm just you know that I, thing I, I, today. I, 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 my bad, guys. Zach Ertz thing yeah, today just kind of yeah, threw me yeah, off. But yeah, I um uh, you know. I come to DC a whole lot to watch games and stuff. I I just want to I'm come up there. And I'm gonna bring them some luck. I got you. Bring them some luck. You, you can do that, and, I, and, I, and I'm not going to have this jersey in the facility. No, you're not going to have that jersey around. <laughs> I, no, I, you, I'll, you, I'll have fact, this away. Fact, I'll have fact, this away, can, my guy. Matter of fact, you can wear that jersey. <laughs> no, I mean, you can wear that jersey. <laughs> listen, that's, Westbrook, my that's guy, not, but I don't, that, wear, I don't wear this jersey much, man. This is this from the 90s. <laughs> it'd be, it, it be, it be making me itch now and like here and there, man. <laughs> but he, you know? Mike Westbrook, good man. He, no, you know he, I mean, he good. You know, he's, I, I, I don't know what he's doing now, but I hope he's doing well. I hope he's doing well. What if they play in the Super Bowl? Well, they play in the NFC Championship game this year. Man, what would you that do? might shoot. They play man. in the NFC Championship game in Washington. If that happens, I might need to start punching myself to see if it's real life or not. <laughs> man. Hey, Steven, hey, I appreciate you coming on the What's Really Good podcast and, and giving your insights. And, and, and touches on things, man. And, I, and I, for sure, man, I'm going to bring you again uh, one of these days, probably after the season of the Redskins or the Panthers, man. Everyone right. out there, go ahead and subscribe to the What's Really Good podcast. More podcasts to come. Take care, guys.